Welcome to the Recruitment Mentors podcast. My name is Hisham Azuz. This is another edition of the Early On in Recruitment series where we're uncovering and speaking to recruiters who are early on in their recruitment journey to find out how they're getting on, advice for people that are considering recruitment as a career, get tips from them on how to survive but actually absolutely smash your first year in recruitment, advice for people to um, do really well in their interviews for recruitment and a lot of other things. But I'm really excited to be joined by Herman today from Ambition Recruitment. But before we start, uh, before I start giving you loads of questions and I was breaking this down, Herman, if you could introduce yourself and uh, we'll get into it. So my name's um, Harman um, and been working in recruitment for pretty much just two years bang on now. Um, graduated in well, finished my uni course in June 2019 and joined recruitment the month after. Um, and I recruit into insolvency and restructuring that ambition. Love it. So have you had your graduation? Have you had that? Yeah, no, I mean, COVID wasn't the thing when I graduated. That hit um, the March after of 2020. Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Um, Some people haven't had that, day. I'm sure you've had mates that might not have had that. Yeah, Just no. Like I, virtually yeah. or something. Yeah, I know there's a few people that haven't had that yet. People who did master's um still haven't actually had a ceremony yet which is yeah. a bit cutting for them i'm sure yeah it's not ideal is it so as you said obviously graduate in 2019 and you what it was geography that you got a degree in yeah geography okay. nice okay um so graduated that like let's just start like how how the hell did you end up in recruitment like was it did you have mates in recruitment did you like i don't know talk to us about that how did you end up in recruitment um so it was actually a cousin that suggested it to me. I must have got to, I don't know, Christmas of third year. Um, and I just had no clue what I wanted to do. Um, mm. sort, of just sort of spoke to him about it. And I was like, God, I'm, I'm graduating this summer. No idea what I want to do. I mean, geography's all right. I focused a bit like on the human side of geography, but it wasn't really my thing. Um, like I enjoyed the course, but the careers from it, and I didn't really fancy working as a town planner for the council or whatever. So um, sort of spoke to him about it and he, he just suggested recruitment and I'd never really, I mean, I knew what the word meant, but I didn't really know what, what it really entailed. Actually, yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, just okay. sort of researched it, um, sort of looked into a bit, looked at a few different companies, um, listened to your podcast at the time as well. Um, nice. I think it was called the Recruitment Roller Coaster podcast back then. Um, yeah. And just from the stories from that, just sort of spurred me on to actually go for it um love that so let's just let's just talk about that pressure that you're feeling i think it's important i think i didn't go to university but i think we all feel pressures of like what the hell are we doing with our life basically and that yeah. constant just feeling of like is this what i want to do maybe for the rest of my life or like what my purpose is or whatever so like would you mind just talking a bit about that because i feel like i'm sure you've spoken about this with your friends but that's a lot of pressure right you've gone to university there's debt that you've taken on and i'm sure you've had you've got parent pressure as well like like harman what are you doing like yeah. da, da, da. so like how did you process that out of interest like uh, maybe even a bit with a bit of hindsight for people that might be going through that now but talk to us a bit about how you felt and how you were processing and dealing with that pressure um i guess i mean a lot of people probably turn to Google these days, don't they? Um, mm. And just sort of Google like what to do if you don't know what you're going to do um, after yeah. graduation. So I turned to Google, um, you know, watched a few YouTube vids and stuff. And everyone's like, oh, don't stress. You'll find your own path in life. Just choose what you enjoy, whatever. Um, yeah. And hearing that as someone that doesn't know what they want to do, you just wish that someone could just give you the answer. Um, mm. So it's annoying that I'm going to say this, but I think just choose something which you think you're going to enjoy, in fairness. <laughs> um, try not to stress about it, even though that's, that's not going to help me to saying that. Um, I think, okay. yeah, the best thing you can do is, I mean, yeah, reach out to, um, if you've got any sort of older mates that have graduated or, you know, brothers, sisters, cousins, you know, maybe your parents, um, just for an idea of what to do. Um, okay. Like there's, there's no pressure on, like you're, you're not going to, chances are, you know, your first job, you're not going to retire in. Um, yeah. You know, graduating at 21, like, I guess you've got your whole life ahead of you. So there's no stress to pick the perfect career. Just choose something you think you're going to be, you know, half good at, <laughs> give it a good yeah, crack. Yeah. If you do well, you do well. If you don't, then learn from it, choose something else kind of thing. Um, yeah. I think for me, it was like a massive pressure of, oh, it's got to be, you know, the exact thing I'm going to be doing for the rest of my life. Um, yeah. like I've got to be perfect at it. I mean, luckily it's worked out for me in recruitment, but um, I think, yeah, just try not to stress about it really. Do your research. Mm. 
So to, let's just talk to that very quickly and then we'll move on. Because I think that's actually, it's that. And like this is what I've taken from some of these conversations, which I just find fascinating, really. Like this idea that like you're going to find exactly what you want to do in the perfect job, like straight out the bat, like straight out the gate. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like if I think my, I had no idea what I wanted to do and it, I then ended up stumbling into sales but before that, I was doing all sorts of delivering pizza for Domino's, working at B&Q, working in different yep. things. Yep. Then I went abroad, had to get, I got a sales role where it was commission only. Then I was like, oh, sales, it was really difficult to start, but I enjoyed it. And then that was that. But like, could you talk to that a sec? Like for anyone that's feeling right now that they, like, why is it, why, like, I don't know, I guess it's easier for you to feel like that now because I don't know, like just why, how can we help people just not put so much weight to I have to get the perfect job like the first job out of uni um I think I think just doing just doing your research I mean people who are watching this you know you can take from it you know me just saying it's not particularly going to help um but if you just do your research speak to people that have graduated um yeah and from their stories you'll be able to tell it will give you a bit more confidence in yourself that you're choosing the right thing or it's it's not a massive commitment um yeah yeah like at the end of the day um you know once you've graduated you, you might want to take a gap year or whatever if you want do some traveling um or you might just want to you know start earning straight away um so i guess you know there, there really isn't any pressure i guess the only real pressure is you know just your degree focus on the degree more than anything get a decent you know get a 2-1 get a first if you can um that's the main thing really um you know in your spare time just look around for jobs um something which you think you, you know you would find interesting i think the main thing is you know go for some interviews um meet the mm. people that actually work there um and ask the questions there you know like, go for interviews it's what i tell my candidates it's it's not a commitment to taking the job you know it's just yeah. a fact fight you know you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you um yeah. so yeah yeah just try not to stress relax yeah no good point and i think just and then it'd be good to get your thoughts on this but i think the other thing just to like really sort of underline is like definitely don't don't definitely don't like put a lot of weight on how your cv is going to look as well do you know what i mean like if you go into a job and you're like three months in and you're like this is fucking terrible like i do not want to be doing this and then you get another yeah. job like that isn't going to affect your chances in 10 years 10 years 10 years time to get a job do you know what i mean even in the yeah. short term i think sometimes that's as well like people like i don't know obviously you help people now prep blah 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 like if you don't if you have a couple of client um businesses on your cv and you're just graduated like that's not the end of the world like you're going to be experimenting and finding stuff out yeah i think the key thing with that is i guess people are afraid of being too jumpy um yeah i mean it's i guess i mean i've not i've only been recruiting for two years so i, I can't really speak for how it used to be from what i've heard though um it's getting better with with clients talking about cvs as being jumpy they understand that people who are a bit younger are going to move around um, yeah. you know, every couple of years or you know a couple of months maybe um depending on how how the firm sort of treated them really or how they sort of felt they fit in so i think the, the key thing here is if you can get your foot in the door at an interview just explain the reasons why they're probably going to ask you even if they're sort of fairly understanding if you've been to mm. three different firms in a year um that obviously you know logically that's going to raise some, some yeah, red yeah. flags they're going to want to know why just make sure you've got answers ready for that um if yeah, they're yeah. genuine and you know um your old boss was you know didn't really get along with him or it wasn't the right fit for you to explain it i mean you know logical rational um whoever you're interviewing your partner director would understand that i think yeah yeah i think yeah i think just final point on this i think as well i think what would make if yeah i get i get that but i think if you're it's different if you're jumping within one industry compared to different industries do you know what i mean because it's yeah. quite a logical story where it's like okay over the last 12 24 months i've worked at four different companies but two like two um companies with different sectors so I was, i've worked out that wasn't right for me but yeah it's definitely you're gonna have to have a solid story if it's constantly jumping around in one industry do you know what i mean yeah, like yeah definitely there. yeah so cool so the question i have first then so obviously it seems like recruitment really piqued your curiosity ended up in recruitment but like what i'd be keen to know from you is what skills or experiences recruitment given you that you least expected um I, it's a difficult one i think um 
because you have such a different uh, you, you have no idea well you do have a bit of an idea but not as much of an idea of what recruitment actually entails when you first join as to when you've been doing it for a little while um yeah so I, I didn't know that you know everyone says it's fast paced you know you've got to be resilient and all these different things but you just sort of say yeah yeah it's fine i'm, I'm resilient I'm, <laughs> I, can, I can do all this stuff yeah you've actually got no, got that. <laughs> yeah you've actually got no idea um it's actually tough so i think the main thing i the, sk- the main thing the main skill i think i've learned and something which i'm still sort of developing um probably is just prioritizing tasks in order mm. of in order of importance so you might have you know x number of jobs come through the door um or you might be working with a number of candidates you've got to be able to rank it in order of what's going to get you where you want to be essentially or, or what's going to be um i think knowing when to quit is 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 one of the most important things that's been something that's difficult um you know if you've if you've been trying to source a job for quite a long time the, the client's tricky or um you know the processes are dragging or you're sending candidates and they're just not getting the interview the, you know the client might be really really choosy um your time is probably best spent elsewhere um so i think yeah prioritizing jobs um is a, is a key skill that i didn't realize I'd, I'd get and i guess that sort of spills over into life as well if you've got a lot yeah, like of time management prioritize yeah time management yeah basically. Uh, yeah time management i mean yeah i mean i remember sort of talking about that in the interview being like yeah time management i've got like <laughs> de- i've got all these deadlines to hit but it, you've only got maybe what one two three assignments to do at a time and at uni you've got all the time in the world haven't you getting up at like one um and then just doing a bit of work you know going out and then just doing it where you can a few or nights maybe here and there um so i think yeah. um yeah yeah definitely the spinning plates part of it prioritizing tasks that's probably the, the least expected skills i think i've got from it even though i was told that i'd need that uh, it's, <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah i know it's, diff- it's different in reality isn't it when you actually yeah exactly do it it's 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 a really it's a really common area this even for people that are like three four years down the track like time management productivity is is definitely because it isn't it isn't something that it's like a in in the in um, the recruitment mentors community it's like a it was a new sort of learning development area that we introduced like three four months ago because it like we kept getting feedback around that's an area that people really want to develop or improve in because yep. you sort of just have to stumble and learn the hard way really like i mean that's how yeah. I, like there wasn't really you don't really get a lot of support on that or like training so i guess my next question is and i know you said you're still developing this but i guess for people listening to this that are in a similar spot to you i guess what are some of the things that you do now to get better at pro- prioritizing out of interest that maybe you didn't do at the beginning or you had to learn the hard way out of interest um that's quite a difficult question uh <laughs> i think I don't know. I think it's, it's, it, it depends on the individual. Some things will work for some people. Some things won't work for others. I use Microsoft to do the to do list. You can okay. you know prioritize it. That's just a really like um, useful thing for me. You can just slide. It's like a to do list that you can slide, tick it off when you've done it. That's it's like useful. digital one. Yeah, yeah. essentially. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we did have training on it, um, but and that was useful. But I think a lot of it's on the job. Just trial and error. What works for you. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, work closely with your manager be self-critical um, when mm. things don't go your way um, and to sort of learn from it I think the key from it is so cliche but it's just learning from your mistakes isn't it really yeah yeah, um, no, yeah that's fair enough. Or, or, or at least you're trying to improve on it I yeah think. have you this came out of one of our training sessions recently and I actually did this when I first launched my own business when I started training recruiters on personal branding and it really helped because I had yeah. to really there's just I'd obviously spun a lot of plates in recruitment, but there's even more plates when you some that when you start your own business if it's just you. But something have you have you ever looked at like basically auditing a week or what like you your desk out of interest? So an exercise that I did that you might find useful people listening is basically so for a whole week, what I did, I was working with a coach at the time that recommended it. So basically for a whole week, every single hour you write down what you did. And the reason why that would be useful is because you'd be surprised the amount of time that you spend on certain things. So you might be that's, thinking, yeah, I'd recommend doing that uh, because that's actually that's next, seven, I mean, I'll, I'll try that. <laughs> next, try start, it just for start, one start whole week. Start, yeah. One whole week. So every single hour where if I've got terrible handwriting, so I did it digitally. So like every <laughs> single hour, or if obviously if you do different things in that hour, you just write down every single hour, what did I do? Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And 
you'd be surprised there might be some areas like how why the hell am i spending that much time on this or yeah. this is where i need to so yeah i get that and i know it's very much on the job and learning what works for you but i wanted to ask so the next thing then spoke around things that yeah maybe you've gained that you didn't um expect what have been obviously i'm sure you got this from the podcast when you listen but obviously everyone will say recruitment early on is just so so difficult so what have been some of the challenges that you've had to work through out of interest so far um so i guess challenge i think yeah spinning plates that is tough like that is mentally draining um yeah <laughs> trying to spin plates when you've got you know um targets to hit you know things yeah. drop out like it is a tough job um you know things don't always go your way even if sometimes maybe you did everything by the book um yeah. how have you, you know, dealt with that because that's hard at the beginning um I mean, it was never actually, I mean, I guess at the time you're fuming if something doesn't go your way <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, you know, you start totting up the figures in your head and you think, wow, this is going to be great. You know, I, I could potentially be top bidder this month or whatever. Um, and you big yourself up. So I think for me, um, the key thing is I, I never get too excited until something is done and dusted and the offer's mm. accepted, written that person's maybe not started, yeah. but that, that, you know, it's pretty much done and dusted. You put the fee through the system. That's when you can sort of celebrate like early on, like my first fee or one of my, one of my first fees got really, really excited about it. It was my biggest fee in recruitment. It was absolutely buzzing, told everyone, um, you know, and, uh, and then she accepted the counter offer, um, which oh. was just going. So now I'm just a bit more relaxed about it. I think that's, that's how I deal with it. Um, They're a bit more grounded. Like, so you're not too high, not too low yeah just just chill out um yeah, just yeah chill yeah. out and just you know there's always going to be peaks um and there's always going to be lows as well so just take it how it comes just accept it as part of the job at the end of the day just do what you can to mitigate it early on yeah. um and then if it's yeah if it does go wrong um you're, you're still going to be upset of course just go for a walk chill out do whatever you want to do um yeah. then come back discuss it with your team like you know I've got a great team really supportive so you can just sort of talk it over with them and see you know if, if you did go wrong you know did you talk about this this yeah. um and you'll just get trying to, eventually. trying to get that emotion sometimes out of your system isn't it it's yeah just, yeah uh, instead yeah. of it letting it ruin the rest of your day or the week or whatever what yeah. about how have you found so you mentioned spinning a lot of plates again like how have you found have you found it difficult to switch off since you've been in recruitment yeah um I'd say that's something I think is probably the, actually the most difficult thing about the job is switching off, actually. Really? Um, yeah, especially when, because if you proper throw yourself into it, like like I have, um, like especially early on, um, mm. obviously when I first started, it was, yeah, 8, 8.30 start, 6 p.m. finish. Um, and then, you know, if you had something on, you'd be working late. I, I live quite far from London, so it's about an hour and a half there and back. Like someone's getting home oh, wow. late, waking up at 6 so that was tough um but i think yeah um it's a diff that's a difficult question to answer how how do you well you might you might not it? be i'm just it's just good that you're talking about it because there'll be people yeah, listening I, that, I, yeah i mean i think yeah i think you've got it's got to sort of have a work-life balance with it really haven't you um mm. yeah one so one thing that. that's i find i find it hard to switch off but one of the things that i don't know if you do this but one of the things that's really helped me and and there'll be some weeks i'm good at this some weeks i'm terrible but most of the time i'm quite good at it but before i wouldn't like close off the week and what i mean by that is so something that i do every single week now most of the time is i'll basically reflect um at the end of my week on basically so for like 45 minutes it's four till 4 45 on a friday and i'll reflect on okay what went well this week what didn't and then i'll also then look at my goals for the month quarter and then think about the week ahead i think yeah. when i really struggled to switch off was i didn't like i didn't like have closure on the week do you know what i mean when you sort of go into the weekend or even the evening sometimes when there's loose ends you're thinking about certain things because you haven't made it i don't know you're already thinking about next week do you know what i mean yeah so that's, i think that's definitely helped me yeah the big the big time when it, it's a struggle is when um when you go to bed when you go to sleep and you yeah, stop yeah, yeah. and then your mind's just rushing with stuff like should have done this should have done that so that's that yeah that is difficult that i think that's like an ongoing thing really trying to switch off um but uh yeah um i guess just uh 
what, what you said, yeah, it's planning ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, that, that's, that's right for me. Yeah, but what, it's doing. Yeah, whatever it's you doing, said, mate, that's a perfect answer. No, no, yeah, <laughs> I, I definitely wasn't doing that early on, but I wish I'd. I've no, just had to. Yeah, I've had to really invest a lot into like time management, like since having my own business and stuff. Like I've just really had to do that because there's no one else holding me accountable. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Besides yeah. myself. So I guess on that, I would definitely, if you're not already, and again, this has been a game changer for me. But like, if you if you if you leave the office without planning your the next day, like you will you will have even more of those thoughts when you, before you go to bed. Yeah. So I don't know if you're doing that, but I would definitely encourage you to do that, mate. Yeah, no, usually like before 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 I leave the office, try and write like three main things I need to do first thing. I think more yeah, yeah. than anything. I guess I do that, but not with the not not with a view to sort of switching off. It's more just like a so I'm not sort of scrabbing about morning after trying to figure out our oh, goal was I yesterday, what's yeah, going yeah, on yeah. today kind of thing, which has helped with yeah. that. Um yeah, but yeah that's that's that a sense. solid tip for switching off as well, I think. What about so with that then on this, because I think this is one of the challenges with the recruitment industry and why grads come in the industry and then get spat straight back out like how and again you may not have an answer to this but we're talking about it's important so like you said waking up early long commute working hard like what how did you make sure you didn't get burnt out i did actually i mean you did I, really? yeah no i mean i was um i was waking up at six getting into the office and then sometimes working to like you know half seven um just thought you know if i put in more hours than anyone else or if i put you know there are other competitors out there they're not going to be doing this i'll be able to get an edge i'll be you know yeah, yeah. i'll have and that in your control edge. um but i think um you you can do it within the hours you set obviously you might spill over i think the and uh, i think the key thing is just planning planning your day um i think that audit audit your week um that's mm. obviously a tip i've just got on this call but that's that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's that, that sounds that sounds really good i'm going to start that from next week just to see where yeah. you're spending your time. But I guess I sort of did that already, just sort of thinking, um, you know, how, how's my time best spent? Um, you know, don't call candidates or clients just for the sake of it. Get your numbers up. Yeah, um, yeah. Actually want good quality calls. Sit back, um, review your desks. It, you know, where, you know, where's going to get me to target the quickest or yeah, you know, yeah. the easiest. Follow that. Um, what, so, so, where, so you said you burnt out. What? Like, so, I mean, I was just working too many hours. I think I was just grinding it out in the office till late, and then yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I went to the gyms down the road from the offices um, because um, just because Easier. it was just there. Um, and sometimes I wouldn't get home till like you know ten, eleven, and um, that's just too much. <laughs> that that's is sustainable, too is much. It? Like, I don't work for JP Morgan, um, and I'm not trying <laughs> to say, and I'm, and I'm not trying to save no, the world. But, like, so, that's, yeah, I mean, yeah. that's that's a bit extreme. Um, so I mean, I still get the same amount of work done, um, and I still might put pull the odd, you know, late late one, um, or do a bit of work, you know, when I probably mm. should be relaxing. But I think it's just a balance, really, um, to try and figure out what what works best for you. Um, what what are like non what are like non negotiables for you then? Out of interest, like now maybe that you think helps you. And look, there will be some weeks where you've got great opportunity. You know that if you place these three four jobs. You're going to be in a good spot so like you might end up having a week where you're like just absolutely slogging it out that that's just part of the game but like you said and it's why we're having this conversation it's not sustainable like you're not going to have a successful career in recruitment without it being sustainable in yeah the habits that you're building and stuff so i guess just interested for people listening to this that, that may have experienced this already or might be in the middle of it right now where they're doing what you were doing just absolutely slugging it out but it's just there's gonna there might be a point where they're just like I'm absolutely knackered or they fall ill or whatever. Like yeah. what's non-negotiable for you now out of interest that I don't know, maybe every single week you book time to do X. I don't know. Maybe you have um, something, maybe you don't, but I thought I'd ask. I don't really do you mean uh, what do you, what do you mean what do you mean by non-negotiable in terms no, of like my day? Like, a, a sort of time yeah. that I will spend doing one thing or well, I guess sorry, so I guess what I was just trying to find out was you said that you've you felt like you've experienced experience being burnt out. Yeah. So I guess I'm assuming after that, you're like, right, I'm going to stop like doing this or I'm going to make sure I make, give myself time to right. do this okay. that might help you not be in that position again. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. That's what I, I was mean, trying to find out. Yeah. I, I guess um, I try, I try and take breaks now. I think it's harder doing that from home. I mean, in the office, I usually okay. used to take, a, I, you know, used to be like a pop out to, you know, wherever, yeah. get a coffee, a sandwich, come back and work at the desk. You know, go for a walk. Take take you know at least half an hour, forty five minutes out of your day just to do yeah. something that's not recruitment. Um, yeah, because it's and it's e it's easy to sort of work 
you know, way past the hours you probably should be at home because you just wake up you're straight at your desk like you're at work. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. try yeah, trying yeah. to take trying to take a you know a little bit of time out where you can. Um lunchtime's yeah. well, usually yeah, good. That's... So I, so I, I try and do that. That helps. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's really useful because it's easy to you see people in the office, don't you? Just having their nil do in front of their desk yeah. and then put that in the bin and then they're back slogging out again. So Definitely. you've separated that. Um, okay. So the next thing, and I know that you thought this would have been really useful for you to think about or spend some more time on. So I wanted to ask it for you. So let's just talk a bit about for the next sort of 10, 15 minutes before we finish, um, like just advice for people maybe considering recruitment and we'll talk a bit about some other things but what was your whole process on like finding out what industry you wanted to recruit in out of interest in uh yeah yeah so that was a massive one for me because i was sort of looking around recruitment firms um you know what have you got you got audit tax um finance accounting all the tech all this all this stuff and yeah. it's like what on earth do i recruit into um and to be honest i sort of just took a look at the company's website had a look at their promo video whatever looked on Glassdoor for average salaries and that kind of thing um and reviews and just sort of applied and interviewed at places and got a feel from it from that um I think yeah in hindsight I, I was it, you shouldn't really bother about it that much it's not that important um you go for an interview I mean I interviewed here so we recruit for um sort of all the service lines for professional services legal and, and practice um mm. had an interview um and i don't know how many people i interviewed so many people but i can tell now they're all people from the different teams um and they sort yeah. of saw which which team my personality fit into and you sort of just get given the desk really don't you um yeah, yeah. and then you learn more about that industry um you know how the candidates are how the clients are um and go from there so i, I don't think it's particularly anything to be that worried about um just interview mm. as many places as you can um and then just ask the question like you know why should I choose tech recruitment over don't, don't yeah, be too yeah. presumptuous, but you know, why do I choose this over this? You know? Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Okay. And what about then, what would be your advice for people who, I mean, like I've seen, I saw another, I don't know if you, if you've seen these, but like, obviously it's, it's difficult for grads to enter the workforce, right? Stand out. It's a lot of competition. Yeah. And see, I mean, I've seen those posts where I saw a guy this week post, I don't know if you saw it, guy sitting in a free piece standing in a free piece suit outside liverpool street and yeah i've got to rate that fucking That's roasting it. mate oh my yeah, god yeah, he's out there like, like what's it 30 degrees it yeah do you know what i mean so it's just like he wouldn't be doing that if it was if it was like easy to get a job do you know what i mean yeah. so like advice for people listen to this that i don't know knowing what you know now obviously you've prepped candidates obviously it's not for yeah. recruitment but how can grad stand out do you think um I mean, I wouldn't say you have to go to the extreme of standing out on the street <laughs> corner with your CV and stuff. That probably did work for them, though. I think that post got like five. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure. Likes. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. So I'm have, sure he's probably uh, got a few yeah, you know, interviews off the back of that. So you know, if you back yourself to do that, go and do it. Um, yeah. <laughs> but um, I think uh, in terms of you know getting yourself into processes, first of all, choose what you want to do, or even if you don't know what you want to do, just apply to a variety of things. Yeah. Um, if it's recruitment. Um, I just use LinkedIn Easy Apply. It was nice and easy. Upload your CV, bang, mm. bang, bang, supply to all these companies, um, get some interviews off the back of that. Um, I'd say the key thing is, yeah, with the CV, um, I don't know how important this is for other other places, but for me, if I see a CV that's not formatted correctly or the content's got spelling mistakes, that just annoys me. Um, like, it's, yeah. you know, put, put a bit of effort into it, double check it and stuff, um, that kind of thing. And then when you do get into an interview, this is obviously probably more important than your CV um is to just prep as much as you can in terms of research into the company um but i'd say more importantly the the people that are interviewing you if you can find that out so if mm. you're going through um i don't know if you go through a rec to rec they'll probably tell you or if you're applying directly um just ask the internal recruiter or whoever you're speaking to who are you interviewing with build a bit of rapport with them um because a lot of um recruitment interviews and hires off the back of them are based on personality really aren't, aren't they more than anything yeah culture um, isn't it yeah so and attitude and yeah just build, build a bit of rapport with them um i like pretty much stalked the the director um <laughs> ambition before i before i joined and looked through everyone's profiles um you know looked at their likes found out their interests um <laughs> so when you go in you can you know shake the hand 
you know address them by their name and that's what's kind of stuff really impresses um yeah, yeah and then in your questions um just you know you might not always have the chance to um show them that you've done all this research in the interview so at the end if they ask if you've got any questions you know um i you know i saw that Bob, you did I, this, i've seen did a... i saw that you know i've seen you've been working here for 10 years kind of thing you joined straight out of out of uni um like what you know, advice would you have for what, me to be successful or something like that that's literally yeah that's literally one of the questions i asked and that just, i think that's impresses yeah yeah no for so, sure stuff How... like that so on this, I think, because just uh, again, I didn't go to university, but like how, how like, did, was you like communicated to like how powerful LinkedIn can be for your career? <laughs> Not at all. Um, That's I mean, mental, I sort of, isn't it? I, yeah. I mean, I sort of just got it as a joke. Um, in first year, me and all my mates just sort of downloaded LinkedIn. We like, like, what is, I think they did business management, a lot of them. They had, yeah. to, they had to make a, a LinkedIn profile for their course. Maybe they studied something about it on that, but you can imagine in geography, like i'm not i've not i was linkedin was not a part of my course at all which in hindsight i mean yeah they probably teach it in school to be fair um yeah like, they should, would, yeah like, it's, well, it's about would, your it's career isn't it it's like it's like, career yeah. related why, so why like, wouldn't you? what i wanted to ask you is again people listen to this like so you said that obviously use linkedin to apply but and then you also used it for research but anything else did you like how else did you use linkedin when you were like applying trying to get in the door with places that maybe was also useful do you think um I guess I mean I followed the hashtag recruitment um yeah. hashtag recruitment jobs followed all that started liking internal recruiters posts um and I guess the main just engaging thing, with people yeah just engage with people you know comment on stuff you know maybe do like a post something like that I don't know about your yeah. uni course just get some engagement going um yeah. if you can and just a- apply to jobs it doesn't have to be through LinkedIn it can be through the company's website it can be through um you know read whatever um but with linkedin i think um key thing is just to the way the algorithm works you just want to you know post stuff like stuff comment on stuff and then your profile gets seen yeah yeah for sure i think uh i think one of the great things about linkedin is like people generally are willing to help on on the platform yeah literally if if you're a grad listening to this and you're like i i really want help with this like literally i would just do a post stick a picture of yourself on there and be like this is me this is what i'm after anyone yeah. like if anyone could help that'd be great and you'd be surprised how many people could help so yeah definitely i i think yeah linkedin's amazing um i think i mean what do people do before linkedin no idea yeah, no. <laughs> i just i just can't believe it's like not at to be spoken about at yeah uni. do you know what yeah, i mean yeah like, it's just it crazy be. it's just nuts it should be uh, so a couple of things before we finish. So I know that obviously part of your journey so far was when you was on furlough. Yeah. Um, but what I wanted to ask you was, I guess I know like you're still on your journey, but just interested. So like for people that might be still in their first year, like what would be your top tips for success or to have the best chance of having success in recruitment in those first six, 12 months out of interest? Knowing what you know. Um, I think you've got to fully commit to it um yeah. you know you don't have to work crazy hours but you probably will have to do some unsociable hours at times just to get stuff over the line um yeah but aside from that i think yeah commit yourself to it just um you know just sort of be a sponge and sort of soak up as much as you can ask questions um mm. and you know just sort of back yourself um you know you probably hear loads of horror stories coming into recruit about how difficult it is and it is tough um but if you choose the right company I mean, ambition are great. Um, like, you know, you've got supportive, supportive atmosphere. Um, it's, it's not as, I mean, you know, when you go into recruitment, you think it's going to be super, super sharky and everyone's going to be nicking everyone's roles and all that kind of stuff. And I'm sure that stuff probably does go on at some places still, but I mean, it, and I can only talk about my own experience at ambition. Yeah, of course. You've got to choose the right team. Um, and the only way you can sort of really figure that out is look at Glassdoor, look at reviews, speak to people, um, within the firm interview there uh and just choose the right firm um and i think if your if your company wants you to do well you probably will do well if you if you know if you put the effort in um yeah i think it has a practical tips so i'd say the biggest thing for me is by like, actually having the courage and you know just be brave and pick up the phone um and dial a notoriously spiky candidate or client <laughs> that might be a bit cold um like that's the hardest bit picking up the phone and, and dialing yeah um 
you know, how did you work through it? Like, how did you get over that? Because like, I, I, yeah. I, I can remember that. So, I to be well, fair, it still happens now sometimes when I'm doing yeah. business development. You just have that weird natural. internal voice of like, oh, you're going to get rejected. You're going to get rejected. It's going to go yeah, terribly. So I think the more you practice it, the better you get at it. Um, yeah, yeah. And I've, I've got a post-it note in front, in front of me that says, "Afraid of doing business development? Question mark Are you going to die?" <laughs> exactly you know what I mean? what's the worst that can happen they're literally you, and like you need take... to check yourself with that sometimes yeah just like yeah you know don't take yourself too seriously with it i think um the worst thing they can do is say no um or just be you know slightly uh i've never really ha- yeah, yeah. had this happen to me but you know be ag- i've heard it you know be ag- you know aggressive with you on the phone or whatever it is just their loss yeah, yeah. kind of thing um you you know back yourself you're a good recruiter you could have given them an excellent candidate or opportunity so brush it off move on um yeah yeah and again i um, think that's where your team no, sorry, comes sorry. Into it. yeah o- on this really quickly and then i'll ask you the final question sorry and i know when you when you we spoke you said um sometimes you like to go out the office and that but i just want to ask you because i've had this in my inbox before and i definitely remember this so i when i went into recruitment it was a team of eight people so obviously it was just just literally obviously like a bank of desks we were all yeah. each other so it's a small environment and I've had people message me about this before, but like, how did you get over like that worry of if people listening to your calls? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a real, it's a real I thing. Hate, that. I hate that. Do you know what I did? You know when you leave a voicemail um, and you can press yeah. hash to to re-record it. Yeah. Um, so I was a bit of well, I still am, I guess, but I was proper proper perfectionist when I first started. I had to leave the perfect voicemail. Um, and if I didn't, I pressed hash and I just found that so embarrassing. Like, come on, just get the voice the right first time. <laughs> and it's like, you know, if you stumble your words, like, you know, call me on or call me on my, my, my mobile. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. And it's like, oh, hash, record. I think, I mean, it's just, yeah, you get over it. I mean, everyone sort of has that. You're in a room with like, you know, ambition is probably about 30 of us now um, in the office. Uh, and everyone's, if the room's quiet and, you know, you're speaking to a camp for the first time and you're like, you just gotta get over it. That that is, I think everyone struggles with that. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. You do get over it though. As you get to know a little more, you feel a little more comfortable in your own skin within the office. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. It is. It's like when it's obviously it's harder when you're like the new person. Do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like exactly, when you're like yeah. when you're like more embedded in the team and that. It like you don't you don't care. It's just funny because yeah. it is true. Like everyone goes through that. Um, <laughs> love that. So look, final question, an important one. Why why should more people consider recruitment as a career rather than it just always being an accidental career do you think why should people be choosing this as a career from your experience um, so far i think i mean i can only speak to myself as an individual but i don't know what other people's motivations are i'm assuming that the financial side's a huge thing for everyone but i guess that's already well known um mm. so is the um i struggle with this word merit meritocratic side of it as yeah well. i i struggle with that word <laughs> meritocratic Merit- yeah um, i can't even i don't understand <laughs> so yeah i guess that side of thing that was a massive thing for me personally um i guess you know if you you know put in the hard work you, you know you get to a certain target like you'll move up and progress you'll be recognized for that within the business um yeah. so that's a massive thing um and i think you know aside from um all the sort of standard stuff, ping pong tables and incentives and all this rubbish that's sort of flying around. You know, mm. I guess the most important thing is you're working in a people job. If you like working with people, um, not just sort of, you know, clients and candidates, you know, just in the office, it's very social. Um, it's quite relaxed. You know, you can have a laugh with people and it's uh, it's quite focused, but friendly. I think that's how I describe it, ambition at least. So I think yeah. if you want, um, you know, if you want a job where, you know, you wake up and, I mean, I'm not going to lie, you don't always wake up fully fully excited for the day it's got something really important going on but like generally more times than not you're buzzing just to get started um and especially if you come into the office and having a laugh with you know people who become your mates um then you know it's a fantastic career to choose i think love it thank you so much for coming on the podcast thanks a lot for being part of it excited no to worries, see thank you. we're on another two, two years my man thanks yeah, a lot. definitely thanks very much